So I've just hiked up from the car. I'm just on a bit of a day walk. I'm heading to a series of little lakes which have got no name as far as I can find out on the map. It's a high chance they've got trout in them. Nearly every little bit of water here. Puddle even's got trout in them. It's quite remarkable. And I've just got up here to this hut. I love old huts and rusty huts like this. I've been up here once before and that door's normally closed but some idiots have left it open. And what will happen is the wind will blow and it'll pull it off the hinges and eventually this hut will be no more. I hate dickheads like that. But anyhow, this little hut's called Tin Hut. And you'll never guess what the lake behind it's called. Tin Hut Lake. So I'm going to have a look at that as I walk around it before I head off away from it. And you know, the, the sun, the clouds just cleared, the sun's came out, it's pretty hot. And there might be some fish around there. I'm also here because I'm trying to get this leg to stop limping. Sometimes I lose feeling in my leg completely and it's not fun. And it's one of the reasons why I'm in Tasmania because you never know when you lose your fitness. The specialist can't seem to help me. The thing is to do with spinal nerves. And it's a right pain when I lose my leg and I gotta drag it. So I've got emergency medicine. I've got my emergency beacon and my Garmin with me. But this is just one stunning place. Like I say, who doesn't love huts? The history in this hut must be unreal. I might have a little look inside. Like I'm gonna close this when I leave and I feel like punching somebody in the nose that left it open. No respect, even though it's basic inside. So, and another reason I've come to Tasmania is people don't realize I was once here before I think maybe 20 years ago, not too sure, long time ago. I don't, there was no digital cameras then, hardly a mobile phone. If there was mobile phones, they were pretty big. And I had some still photographs of a place that, uh, a hut I was in, that actually pretty much saved my bacon. There was a massive storm came through the area I was in and everything was frozen my tent was frozen I was frozen and I found a hut similar to this and I and I stayed in it for three days before the storm subdued and then I had to um, get myself out of there onto sort of a forestry road from memory and escape and hitch a lift I didn't have a car I just had the rucksack that was on my back it had all my belongings in it the same rucksack I'd left Scotland with nine or ten years before I even came here. And it's quite... I've got a different rucksack now, obviously. But I've always been looking for that hut. And I've always showed photographs to people that still photograph a high half of that hut. And every time I meet someone from Tasmania, I show them that photograph. And I say, do you know where this hut is? And everyone tells me no. Someone will know, but I've not right met the right person. And I'm hoping to stumble across it. So every time I see a hut on a map, I'm going to try and visit it and figure out if that's the place that saved me. I remember it was pretty basic like this one. I remember before I went into it, I was banging the hut like that to scare any snakes or that away. And it's, it saved me. I'll never forget it. Anyhow, I'm off fishing. That's just a wee story, just to let you know what it's all about. And obviously I'm here to try and get stories for a book. One big adventure story. And hopefully I find that hot. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Love you all. And also thanks for your support. All the best, guys. See ya.
Greetings from Tasmania yet again. A few of you have been asking about my lovely sexy bag. Somebody even offered to buy me a new one. I instantly said no. I'm very attached to this one. As you can see, I've been fixing it up. But I'm not too sure how long it's gonna last. But well, let's get down to the flies. At the moment, it's, it's sunny, but there's not too many terrestrials around at the moment. There's some beautiful gum beetles here, all ready to go. But um, I've been getting quite a few trout. There's a lot of uh, black flies around, horse flies and blow flies. So the deed flea, I've been catching quite a few trout using that fly different sizes but mainly I've been getting them on mayflies mayfly cripples size 16 or 14 even though a lot everyone's using size 12s and bigger hooks here and they're using a lot of parachutes and I'm getting a lot of refusals from parachutes when I've tried them just experimenting but the old mayfly cripple that's my winner that's my go-to fly every time um, yeah you can't go wrong just split the wings in it put some floating on it and that, that size there I'm using about four pound tippet and very rarely I get a refusal when I'm using that fly here in Tasmania so at the moment a lot of mayfly still but things are about to change so hopefully I get to play around um, got some some of the deadly hoppers here etc and if i go down to some lowland lakes i've got the some damsels some tadpoles so i should have been having fun with them later and some deadly ants but like i say at the moment this is basically my dry fly that i use all the time and yeah just having some great fun with it some great visuals here what a fishery it is for visual lake visuals but you've got to get everything right the sky's got to be uh, cloudless and you just got to sneak around the edges and like i say the the visual sight fishing here is unbelievable and the fish are all pretty decent that's why i'm happy that i use good hooks been looking at a few flies around and they're not tied in any good hooks no one really cares about the hooks but if you get a big fish on and you don't fight it like a pussy that's when a good you need a good hook if you're putting the pressure on and you're having fun a shit hook will bend out and you'll lose the fish so i'm all about good hooks obviously you've got to catch the fish to start with anyhow i'll stop rattling and i'll leave you to it and I better go make a cheese sandwich for my dinner. Over and out. Love you all. Take care. Here I am on Tin Lake. The last time I was here, there was like 10 foot waves. And it was nearly impossible to walk. Uh, obviously I didn't stay very long, but today's much better. I'm just having a quick look, it's not really where I'm going. But today, here's, here's my tip today. As I'm walking along this peninsula here, and I'm keeping back from the edge, I'm hoping to see fish just cruising really close to that edge. But as I'm walking, I'm looking into these little sheltered little bays here, these little bits here. Because in them is where the, any food that's been swept around is trapped during the night and early morning. And already I can see in there little shucks, some little dead mayflies, mayfly spinners. And that's why I've got a little cripple on. So even though I'm walking along here, sneaking along, eyes peeled, I'm always checking down there on my left. Anywhere where you see that foam, those white bubbles, that's where food will be trapped. That's my tip for today. Over and out. Love you all. Just walking along here. I don't know if this is going to work, but I've just got the 
little cripple out there. Orbit of fish. Yep. <laughs> what a fluke. It's a nice fish. Right on the edge. Ooh. Only had a foot of line out. Oh, tell a lie. I, I just had about a metre of leader out over the over the banking. And that fish was just cruising really tight to the edge. And he's in there. Try to keep the rod up high, see if I can get him to jump for you. Wind in a bit. I'm not actually planning to make any videos, but as such, but I've been I've been asked to by Simon Ben that's helping me back home in New Zealand so I can buy some noodles. But yeah, look at that. Right on the edge. Exactly what I was hoping for. Size it's a size 14 little brown mayfly cripple. It's on a curved hook, so it looks actually like a 16. It's my little reel. Love my little reel. Pretty cool if it did a bigger run, but I'm I've got a lot of pressure on him. And I'm just going to try and horse him. Western lakes for you. Stunning fish here. The visuals, if you get the conditions right. After today, it's meant to be very windy and cloudy. So it looks like I got two to three days hiding in the car, in the office, finishing up, um, transferring some notes onto the computer for this next book, Wandering Trout. i will try to tie that fish out. My, uh, my wrist is actually getting sore. As you can see, I've got a lot of pressure on this fish, but that's what it's about. I'm the drag in this reel's crap, but uh, that's what I love about it. it. Makes things more challenging. There's that large arbor reels with the fancy drags. You know, I've got them all. But that's maybe a little bit like cheating, I've decided. It's only taken me decades to decide that. So I've gone back to a little old hardy reel for a bit more fun. I'm just going to try and jump this. This nice heavy fish. Yeah, so I'm actually waiting for... I need a spell in the weather. I've, I've got a mission to go on for another chapter, another challenge, trout challenge at some lakes where the people that told me about them have never caught a fish. The last time they were there, they camped for three days and on both lakes and didn't get a fish. And they've never caught one ever and they've been fishing here since they were kids. So that's my challenge, but I need at least seven days of sunshine, which is not, not forecast yet. So that's what I'm waiting on. Everything's gotta be perfect. For, to have a chance. Anyway, I'm going to get this fish in. Uh, my arm's getting sore. Right. It's, it's not the smallest fish to just horse in. It? It's on four pound. It's on a four pound leader. I'll tip it. trying to jump but he's just too tired. Big head in him. There's that trout there. It's a cracker. Beautiful colours on it. Nice big size as well. So 
holding him there for a minute. Just letting him, he's ready to go. Thank you, Mr. Trout. He's just going there. He's just going to, here he comes. He's going to just cruise into the side there again. Yeah, he's just having a rest. Beautiful. And on the surface there, you can actually see dead mayfly spinners, etc. So that little cripple mayfly, you know, you basically can't go wrong with it. I would say that, but wouldn't I? Wow, he just came along that edge. About a foot out, if that. And he was just sipping mayflies. And I cast the fly out, just about a foot out from the edge. Leader, everything, fly line, everything was on the grass. And the fly was just, just off the edge. Just basically with the tippet line. He came across, I didn't, couldn't see him tight to the banking, but he just came out that foot, subbed it in, and, and there we go. What a day already. Well, didn't go as planned, but that's fishing. So in the last four hours, that's the first fish I've seen. It's really close to the banking. And it's having none of it. Wow. This is the wilderness area of well, the Highland Lakes of Tasmania. And this is what you get. You sometimes catch none in a day. Catch one or two is a good day. Sometimes you see no fish. Uh, the weather's come right, but it's about to shit itself. But um, yeah, <laughs> it was fun. Well, the weather's changing. Wind's picking up and it's meant to get stronger. Just waiting in that tent drying. But while I'm putting on my gear, a few other little tips, especially if you're wet waiting, is, whoop, I don't wanna put them on. Yeah, some really fast dry pants is, is handy. If you've got a lot of cotton, etc., it can cause a lot of chaffing. But even these kind, especially if you're wet waiting and you're up past your waistline, getting wet all the time, Something just bit me in the leg. Um, that's what I get for standing half in the nude. So yeah, I'm going to put them on in a second. But first I'm going to put some of this on. This in the groin area just stops the chaffing. It's, you know, you can be in so much pain with chaffing. So, you know, a lot of tri people in triathlons, etc. They'll use a bit of Vaseline there, you know, in the inner groin. So yeah, I'm going to use a bit of that. I have got a little bit of chaffing because I was deep wet wading earlier, a few days ago. Um, trousers, fast dry. I just found these ones. I don't know what they're called. But these, these are a Kathmandu brand, but very light. And they're drying pretty quick because before all that stretchy fabric was too thick and it would take ages for them to dry out. 
I have got a thick pair, a really good pair of uh, hunting pants with me, trousers. But they're just too thick. They take forever to dry. I just washed them the other day and they took nearly four hours to dry in direct sun. So anyway, nice and light these ones are. Uh, don't know, but you would find them. Anyway, let's, uh, ah, forget it. Okie doke, that's my tips. See ya from Tasmania. Yep, there we go there. It's probably the best place when you're hiking to have your Garmin if you've got one. I find myself uh, looking at it sometimes when I probably don't need to, so in a way it's a bit of a pain in the ass. I hate technology. I sort of hate it but love it. But anyway, that's where you want to keep it so you don't lose it and it's easy to access you go for a tumble and i'm good at going for a tumble oh you can see my rods there another tip no need to take the tubes with you i've always i always carry a spare rod so i've got two rods i've got them fastened on there but i've also got them tied on you can see the cord at the back there and because you can lose them but if you just tie them on you're not going to lose them i've lost rods before and uh, lucky I've always found them, but it's been a mission. But uh, since I started tying them up to the pack, I haven't lost any. And yeah, I've only learned through trial and error to always take two rods. Once I walked for about four hours uh, into a place, I got there. I did one cast and my rod broke. It must have been fractured. It was a cheap shitty brand anyway. I should name it because they were not nice to me, but I won't. But anyway, that was years ago. And since then, I stay away from those shitty brands and those horrible people. <laughs> anyway, yeah, always take two rods. Love you and leave you. I'm off to try and catch that fish, that one fish that, is a, that may be in that lake. And it may not be. Call me mad. Probably got another two and a half hours, three hours to go. Uh, I better get there. I've got sun today. That's what I've been waiting on. See ya. This is another camping tip. I'll get on to the fishing tips eventually. But obviously I do a lot of camping and have done. If you're ever drying your tent out, always put a rock on top of it i've seen people chasing their tents for kilometers in deserts etc so um yeah weight down if you're trying to dry it out and keep an eye on it that's my tip So I'm just bashing through the scrub here and any excuse to get that pack off weighs a ton. Well, maybe not a ton, but feels like a ton. Maybe two tons it feels like. But anyway, it's quite a, just amazing that like you're just going along and next minute you just find a little bit of water and it's got fish in it. Native, small native fish. I'm just wondering, oh, Something just bit me. Oh, uh, oh those horse flies. Get it, beat it. It's amazing. I wonder what the story is. I thought it was little trout at first, and I thought, oh, yeah, I'm going to sight fish and try and catch them. But I think these are protected, so I'm not going to attempt to, uh, uh, to try and catch a protected species. You can just see them there. They're the biggest ones I've seen. Galaxids. I think there's a few different species. I don't know which one these are. But it's just cool watching them. Yeah, just amazing. Middle of nowhere. Top of a mountain. You just come across these little these little lagoons, little tarns. Some of them are bone dry. Some still got a bit of water in them. 
And obviously this one's got some water in them in it. <laughs> and it's got some fish. I just always wonder what the story is. Everything's got a story, as we know. There's two bigger ones here. Let's see if I can zoom in a bit for you. Oh, there you go. Pretty neat, yeah? I love it. I love it. Just watching fish I love. Thanks for watching. See ya. Just got my breath back. I'm soaking my sweat. The old left leg is playing up. And I've just come through a wall of high scrub. I popped out here on the top. And uh, what a relief that was to get out of that. But anyway, I'm hoping one of them lakes, or maybe it's the, maybe they're both joined, is Lake Pistachio. It's definitely not this one according to my map and yeah that's what i've got i've got three days today sunny i need the sun to see the fish tomorrow not so good the next day not so good and then the weather gets crap so i've only got three days to try and camp there and find this uh, one fish in that lake system if it's still there and yeah it's a little bit like uh, looking for a needle in the haystack but hey i love that shit but that's where i'm going um, if I get lucky today, I've got another lake that I've been given for a challenge, um, and I'll tell you about that later. But this is the last you'll probably hear from me, because um, you're going to have to read the book, because this is going to be a chapter in the book, this, this little adventure. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you all later. Have a great day. Good morning. I'm off on another mission. I'm hoping to go to a lake, apparently over that way, about four kilometers through the scrub. And yeah, another challenge. The gentleman that's told me about it has guided for 24 years, works for fisheries, very well known man. He's an encyclopedia of trout in these parts. And he's never caught a fish in it. But apparently he has seen at least two. So I'm going to go to this this lake called Ham Lake and see if I can um, take up the challenge. But the weather's not the best. We've got a lot of cloud. I really need the sun, but I'm on my way there anyway. I've probably only got two days of half decent, well, this sort of weather to pull it off. I'll try. But that's part of the challenge. Uh, that this plant here is very, very spiky and you just need to touch it as like a cactus. It pricks you. In Scotland we would, would say, it's dead jaggy. <laughs> I remember that from my youth. Dead jaggy. Don't touch it, it's dead jaggy. But when, I, when I'm walking and I come to wall of this, it absolutely um, perforates your upper thighs. It's not, it's very hard to get pushed through. A snake would even struggle. But anyway, over and out. I'm gonna love you and leave you from Tasmania. And hopefully this is another chapter in the book, Wandering Trout, you're gonna love. I would say that. See ya. Well, eventually I've arrived at Ham Lake. And got that cloud, got a bit of wind, definitely not ideal conditions. It looks like there's going to be, a, it's going to be quite hard to find a place to camp. I might have to try and squeeze the tent in here. But yeah, look, it looks like a deep lake. And um, they're usually not too inviting. I may have to blind fish, but really I'd like to sight fish. Well, depending if there's any fish in here, apparently there is, but not many. And that's the challenge. So I'm here to accept that challenge. 
Thank you, Chris. And let's see what happens. Like I said before, I've probably only got two days. Um, obviously, I can't tell you what happens because that's in the book. I think, unless it gets cut. But we'll see. I've got to do these adventures. I got to do. <laughs> I got to try and um, give everything a go to actually get some decent stories to entertain you all. But hey, I'm gonna love you and leave you. Thanks for watching and thanks so much for your support. Recommend Stu's Superior Flies to everyone and anyone you know. Because it's more than just a little fly business. Here's a little tip for you. I'm just casting off the drop off out there. A little bit of wind, but I'm smacking that fly down the best I can trying to attract any attention from any trout down deep that will probably be traveling along that deep dark drop off so yeah sometimes you just forget about that nice gentle presentation smack it down tell them there's food there i call that the come and eat me cast there you go i hope that was of some help better I try and catch a fish. Say yeah, thanks for watching. Oh, here's another, yeah, you guessed it, another tip. Getting elevated. So I've climbed up this tree and I'm pretty high and I've got some good visibility here when the sun comes out. And I'm just watching to see if any fish cruise along here. I haven't seen a sausage so far. Nothing. This lake's deep. It's full of demons and trout banshees. But uh, hopefully there is some trout in it. But yeah, when you do stuff like this, you just got to watch you don't fall off. Especially if no one's around. Because then no one gets a good laugh at it. Anyhow, the sun's coming out. My eyes are flying around, and yeah, I'm just hoping there's a fish comes through here. I've probably just got enough room behind me to make a cast and get it down there. I'll probably get caught up in that in those bushes, but I might climb onto this branch uh, to avoid that. But that might be a wee bit risky. But hey, it's fishing. Gonna love you and leave you. Yeah, get elevated and and keep your fingers crossed. I'll shut up and leave you. Thanks for watching. It's early morning and I've just let another fisherman that i that i met last night just fish along this bay he didn't have any luck but um last night the fish were coming in on the edges here and you could see the the dorsal fins and the tips of the tails and the shallows as they just gently went along it was quite amazing It was beautiful i was hoping it was going to be like that this morning because um i've remembered my camera but no no such luck it was freezing last night and apparently Mark says there's a forecast uh, of snow, maybe some snow. So there's a wash snow warning, so he's heading out and so am I this morning. But anyway, it's a beautiful morning. Pretty sexy looking. And that's it. I'm going to love you and leave you from Tasmania. Oh, and the reason the fish came in here in the evening and they've come in, in the this morning early is because the water's quite cool here. During the day yesterday and the days before, it's been quite hot. So the edges of the water here have been quite 
it had been quite warm to warm for trout, so the trout had been out there in the middle, and then they come in in the evening, and plus insects are hatching in the shallow water, and some falling and flying to the water from the vegetation, the bankside vegetation here in the evening. Um, mainly, there's nothing much happening this morning, but okay, I'll definitely leave you now. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your support.